Funding for Reading Rainbow is provided by Country Inns and Suites, where you can borrow a book at our Read It and Return Lending Library and return it on your next day. Country Inns and Suites by Carlson, committed to literacy. And by a ready-to-learn television cooperative agreement from the U.S. Department of Education through the Public Broadcasting Service. The Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. skate day at Prospect Park, so everybody's here with their families. When you look around, you can tell who's related. Families just act a certain way, like they belong together. Everybody grows up in one, and you spend so much time together, you really get to know each other pretty well. But there's always something that your family does that really gets on your nerves. You know what I mean? My mom still does this now. She'll, she'll call me everybody's name. Uh, Pat, Lisa, Selena, um, Michelle. When it's time to turn off the TV and to do my homework. Not, not putting the cap on the toothpaste. Fighting. I hate it when the kids leave their clothes on the bathroom floor. She's a copycat. I am not. I am too. I'm don't. not. OK, OK, OK. Nobody's perfect. But there's another side to this story. Your family also makes you feel great. What is it about your family that's just the best? I really love it when we get to go bike riding with the family. I love my brother. Help me set the table. When I need them, they're there. Being united, having one another, being able to share things with each other. Oh, what don't I love about my family? They do the little things, you know. Dad, you're my best friend, you know. That, that really gets them. I really like you because you're my mom. Oh, I like you too. <laughs> Whoa, excuse me. <laughs> I guess there's no one way to feel about your family. It's really a mix. Sometimes you love them, sometimes you complain. But when you put it all together, your family really is one of the most important things in your life. Families are created in many different ways. This story tells how one got started when parents who wanted a child found a child who needed parents. It's called Through Moon and Stars and Night Skies. Through moon and stars and night skies. By Ann Turner. Pictures by James Graham Hale. Read by Andrew Lee. Let me tell the story this time, Mama. Let me tell how I came to you. Mama said, let's remember. Once I was a picture you held in your hand. Shh, Mama. 
I will tell how I carry all your pictures all the way to you. One was of my new papa and mama. Another was of your red dog. There was a white house with a green tree out front. Inside was a room waiting for me. And a bed just for me. On that bed was a teddy bear quilt waiting for me. I needed a bed of my own. I needed a papa and mama of my own. But I had to fly for a day and a night to get to you. Someone took my hand. I climbed the long steps to the plane. A woman sat beside me all the way to you. I flew through blue skies and clouds and sunlight. I flew through night and moon and stars. But I did not sleep. I was afraid of the night rushing by, of the plane roaring, of all the new things. I kept your picture in my hand all the way to you. The woman took my hand and led me to a room with too many people. But I looked and looked and saw you. You both held out your arms to me. The woman gave me to you, Mama. You took me home. You held my hand all the way. We stopped in front of the white house with a green tree. I knew it was my house. Then you took me inside. The room was full of strange things. It had dark corners. You tried to put me down, but I yelled. I did not want to be in that strange room. Then I heard a bark. The red dog ran up to me. He jumped and licked my hand. Mama, you smiled at me. I was beginning to know your smile. Papa took me upstairs. We sat in the rocking chair by the window. I held your pictures in my hand. We rocked back and forth, back and forth. I looked into Papa's eyes. They were dark and warm. I was beginning to know his face. Mama, you held out a teddy bear quote. I touched it. It was just like the picture. It was soft and warm. I closed my eyes. I knew your voice now. I knew your smile. I was not so afraid anymore. I had you, Mama, and a new Papa. You would watch over me. I went to sleep and dreamed of moon and stars and night skies and coming to a room where your arms were always held out to me. Lots of families come together the way this one did. It's called adoption. Every year, thousands of families are created through adoption. People adopt children from other parts of the world or from their own countries. But the best thing about adoption is that once a new family is born, it grows. 
just like any other. Something tricky. This is the Harris family, and they're retelling a story they all love to hear, how they became a family. When Daddy and I got married, we wanted to have a family, but we weren't able to have a family grow inside Mom. So we still wanted to have a family, so we went to a special place, an adoption place, where there were people who could help us adopt a child. And when we went there, they said, well, it's going to take a long time. You're going to have to wait. So we said, that's OK. We'll wait. They said, well, do you think you'd like a baby boy or a baby girl? And you know what we told them? A baby boy. No, we just said we want a baby. That's all we want. And we'll do the rest and take care of it and love it. And then one day, the phone rang. And they said, we have a baby boy for you. And who was that? Andrew. 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 That's right. right. That day, I remember when we woke up in the morning, it was snowing, and I was so nervous. I said, what if there's so much snow we can't drive into New York City? And Daddy <laughs> said, don't worry, everything will be all right. But it wasn't a big snowstorm. And so we drove into New York City, and we got Andrew. Oh, he was so little and so cute. So then, Andrew grew up to be three years old, and we, went, we wanted to have another baby. And then Andrew would have somebody to play with, and we would have two children, be a lot more people to love and have fun with and take care of, and a lot more work, too. And finally, when Andrew was four and a half years old, we got another phone call. Yeah, you know what they said? What? They said, there's a baby that needs parents. Would you like to have this baby? And we said, tell us where. We'll be right over. A couple of days after Gavin was born, me and my dad, we went to um, a store around the corner that was called Dry Beach Pharmacy and we looked for something for Gavin and finally we found a little bear sitting on a shelf that we thought would be great for Gavin and so we bought him at the front counter and brought him home and I gave him to Gavin and I, and I named him Bear Bear Harris and that's how it and I always had him for the rest of my life when we tell Gavin and Andrew about being adopted, we always end the story with saying adoption is forever. I was adopted because the parents that, my birth parents, they couldn't take care of me, and they wanted me to have a good family, and it just happened to be my parents, and I was very lucky, very, very lucky. The kids in school, they like, when they don't understand that you are um, adopted, and then they find out, they're like, What's adoption? You're strange. You're different. And I'm like, big deal, because you, I, I have a family, you have a family, and we're all people, and it doesn't make us any different. We both have parents, and we were both born the same way. I don't really run up to somebody that I meet and say, guess what, I'm adopted. Isn't that great? I just like... Sometimes I'll decide if I want to tell somebody that I'm adopted or I don't want to tell them. Sometimes I just gradually get into it after a couple of years. Andrew has expressed some interest in his um, birth heritage, and I tried to explain to him uh, that this was a closed adoption and we didn't know the names of his birth parents. I don't really know if I'll ever go look for my birth parents, but I might. We'll share whatever we know with uh, the children about their birth parents. And if at some point they feel they need more information, we'll help them get that information if we can. My parents, they said that they would help me if, they wanted, if I wanted to find what my, out what my birth parents were like. And they said it was OK, but I would never leave this family, no matter what. Check out this volleyball game. You'd think it's a bunch of kids from the neighborhood, but it's really one family, the Peck family, and all nine kids are adopted. This is their mom, Cindy, with Allie and Abby. Here's Emily and Caroline, Meredith and Jessica, and John, and Chris and Ben. Of course it's a real family, and I'm the real mother. 
I'm, I am a real mother. I'm flesh and blood. I raise my children. I love them. That's what a real mother does. From an, another person's standpoint, as they see my family, they would probably think that it, that it would be unique that my mom is not married, but at the same time has adopted nine, nine kids. But that is, that'd be from somebody who, who uh, doesn't know my mom that well. Every child who's adopted, especially at an older age, has a history that precedes them. And they have to deal at some point in time with what happened to them in the past. No matter how wonderful the present may be, the past is there as a ghost until it's dealt with. I have no memory of my birth parents at all because I came here when I was three and a half. Emily came when she was just turning four. And um, one day when she was about eight, four and a half or so years after, maybe nine years old, we were riding home from school one day. And all of a sudden, a little voice came out of the back of the station wagon. And the voice said, Mom, where's my real mother? I almost drove off the highway. I think it was like the first time I ever brought up the issue about who my birth parents were. So I said to her, well, when we get home, let's look at all of your papers that you came with. And she was very surprised. She said, you mean you have all of that stuff about me? And so my mom like went through and told me about who my father was, who my mother was, and like why I was giving up. She sat there reading the papers over and over and over again. And all of a sudden, she looked up at me. She'd been very interested and involved and calm up to that point. And she said, Mommy? I can't believe that one 28-year-old father couldn't take care of one three-year-old child. And she just went to pieces. So did I. <laughs> um, but that was the point at which Emily really, for the first time, dealt with her past. I think that helped a lot because I haven't had really that many questions now that I'm older about them. I don't really see adoption as a big issue because <laughs> I, don't know, I consider everyone in the family like just as if they were my real brothers and sisters. I think we'll always be close as family, yeah. Meet the Abney family. Who's that baby? Look at that, Tess. The newest member, Tess, is adopted. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Bad news. Two big brothers, Christian and Lee, were born into the family. You catch it. You got it. That's good. That's good. Thank you. I seem to always know that I was going to adopt. It's just something that I knew that I wanted to do before I was ever married, um, before I had children, I knew that at some point in my life that I would want to adopt. It was my mom's idea at first to add another kid to this family. I thought that it was gonna be good because I, me and my brother always did want to adopt. It took, took me, what, six or seven years to come to the conclusion that that's what uh, we should do. But I've always known that I wanted more than uh, two or three children and uh, adopting is another way of extending your family. When we were in, at the adoption agency and they brought Tess to me, they said, this is, this is your baby. And the feeling, when, when you see the baby, there's, there's like an immediate connection. And it was like being in the delivery room again. It was immediate. It was just, you know, a, a sense of love. fun watching her grow up. I gotta get you she's here. smart, That's she gets into everything, she's funny. There's never a dull moment. that 
Tess is going to grow up knowing that she has been adopted into this family and that it's a perfectly legitimate way to come into a family and it's a very loving way and that we feel the same about her, of course, that we feel about her brothers. Do you remember that? Come on, you can remember. Tess is really sweet. She's, um, she's everything I could imagine in a daughter. She's very loving. Very even-tempered, easy to... Uh, to be around, uh, keeps you laughing all the time. When you come down to it, families are just families. Whether you're adopted, live with one parent or two, are an only child, or have a house full of brothers and sisters. There are as many kinds of families as there are books in the library, but you don't have to take my word for it. Hello, my name is Nico Volcor. I read a story with a character in it who was adopted just like me. His name is Horace. That's the name of the book, too. Horace is a spotted leopard. His mama and papa are striped tigers. Mama and papa love him very much. All his cousins have stripes, and Horace feels that he doesn't belong. At the park, he meets a family of spotted leopards. He has fun playing with the leopard children. When the sun goes down, Horace remembers his mom and papa, and he wants to go home. He realizes that that's where he belongs. This book will make you feel so good, especially if you're adopted. After reading Horace, you'll know that you belong no matter what. Have you ever thought about your family? Families are made up of different types of people. This book is filled with poems about families. It's called Fathers, Mothers, Sisters, Brothers. The poems in this book are great. There's a poem about a baby brother, a big sister, your grandma and grandpa. The one about cousins is really sweet. Listen, cousins are cozy wherever they're from. They feel like your family whenever they come. Some people have many, most people have some. Cousins are cozy wherever they're from. I think all families are special. My family's special because I'm a part of it. I'm Alexa and I'm adopted. What makes your family special? Think about it. Are you having trouble managing your family? Does your mother nag you to clean your room? Is your brother picking on you constantly? Well, then I've got a book that might help you. It's called Free to Be a Family by, well, it's got about a million authors. This book is all about how people and families behave. It's like an encyclopedia of stories, plays, poems, and songs. Each one tells a story about being a part of a family. One I really like is a poem called I'll Fix Anthony. It's about what it's like to be a little brother. I'm a little brother, so it made me laugh. My name is Stephen Condorance, and right after I read Free to Be a Family, my brother stopped picking on me. Well, we're still working on it. I hear a lot of talking, my family seems like everyone's telling me how they're supposed to be. I've been doing a lot of looking, and what I see is all different kinds of ways to be, be a family. It's all in the way you care about each other, whether your family's big or small. Day by day, doing things together, you know they're there for you.
You know, it doesn't make a difference who's in your family or how they got there. The important thing is how you feel about them. There's this invisible bond that binds you together, and no matter what, it lasts a lifetime. I'll see you next time. Today's Reading Rainbow books are Through Moon and Stars and Night Skies by Ann Turner. Pictures by James Graham Hale, a Charlotte Zolito book. Horace by Holly Keller, published by Green Willow Books. Fathers, Mothers, Sisters, Brothers, a collection of family poems by Marianne Hoberman, illustrated by Marilyn Hafner, published by Joy Street, Little Brown and Company. Free to Be, a Family a book about all kinds of belonging by Marlo Thomas and Friends, published by Bantam Books. Hi, I'm LeVar Burton. In uncertain times, there's no more effective way to make your kids feel good and safe than to spend time with them. We at Reading Rainbow suggest sharing a book with your family. Read for fun, read for family, read for our future. Funding for Reading Rainbow is provided by Country Inns and Suites by Carlson, offering a family-friendly atmosphere and the Read It and Return Lending Library, where you can borrow a book and return it on your next day. And by a ready-to-learn television cooperative agreement from the U.S. Department of Education through the Public Broadcasting Service. The Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> my